How has COVID-19 impacted your business? The positive and negative, if you could give us your point of yeah. view. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm glad to be a part of this uh, speech, uh, Q&A se sector. As a free forwarder and NVCC cooperation in China, being a part of global supply chain, we suffered the same as all of you. Lockdown, consuming decrease, then transport demand shrink, uh, capacity cut by shipping lines and congestion at depot, and the lack of manpower in the, on the road and in the warehouse. It's all about like a bad circle. But with the pandemic impact, some small freight forwarders who only focus on one or two market took the hardest hit. Uh, they either quit the market or seek for eyeline and merger. By this way, China market reshuffled a lot. However, challenge brings opportunities. Uh, the one who sees the, the opportunity becomes stronger. It's happening in our group too. Uh, by the end of the second quarter, we merged a Ningbo company in Ningbo port. Mm, the second month, the, perform the performance doubled and uh, it's increasing day by day. Meanwhile, uh, when the world becomes slow, we took a step down, be a thinker than an actor because we usually act very fast, very flexible, but this time, we, we, we look back. The pandemic gave us a chance to review internal management and operation, making it further optimized and being pre prepared for the next battle, the last and the most profound one, business innovation. Uh, for years, our group invested in digital transformation uh, initiatives. It didn't make any profound changes. Uh, however, in the wake of pandemic, those plans have been accelerating. The paperless work procedure, telecommuting, online, uh, online training, online meeting, and the cloud data sharing, this all happening. Customers are forced to accept digital information more than before. Um, and as our staff, of course, uh, they, fought, they are, they are, they are more, has more motivation to adopt new tools. Um, all those innovation made us uh, more cost effective and create new ways uh, of getting clients. So for us, we, say we consider more positive uh, samples. Thank you, Claire, for your very valuable insight uh, into, into your situation. Uh, if we may continue, Daisy, uh, how has uh, COVID-19 impacted your business, uh, uh, the good and the bad? Uh, I think uh, maybe we start from something negative, then turn to the positive. <laughs> uh, always the negative first. Uh, yeah. For example, uh, especially in recent months, of uh, the rate of exchange against the US dollar is not so stable, bringing a lot of uh, uncertainty. This is one of the things we are suffering. And also a very hard topic is regarding the shipping line keeps out of space supplying. This is also a tough part for us. As, as you may know, we are now keeping uh, sending around almost 200, uh, let's say 180 direct destinations, consolidations around the world. So we have more demanding on the space. And uh, for some destinations, we are even, we were even doing weekly cons uh, daily consoles with five sailings, for example, in a week. So it's very tough to, uh, to struggling to get space. This is a very hard, pa uh, hard part. We are keeping a lot of talking with overseas partners. We are trying to find ways to fire the rate.
space with and uh, also space protection with all these partners. This is a hard part we are suffering recently. And of course, uh, we also now uh, have no business traveling, uh, less face-to-face -face communication. We, we are forced to open like, like Teams, Zoom, Skype, video meetings instead of face-to-face. -face. But uh, also we are suffering, for example, more risks on the payment. The more partners, the more payment we are having on a monthly basis, the more challenging for us. For us, so this is uh, some of the negative uh, points. But for the positive part, we also have a, a lot of a positive uh, uh, points that we get. For example, uh, since uh, the pandemic, uh, after how to say we uh, all get back to the office working uh, since March, uh, slowly we picked up the volume, and even we had broken our record of the volume that we, uh, we got from many cities, port of loadings, and the lucky branch offices. We already broken our past record. We had even more cargo volume. I trust is also because we have less competitors, maybe. And also, uh, we have more branches opened in this year. For example, we opened the Suzhou branch, we opened the Hangzhou branch, we also opened Chongqing branch. And in this way, we also have more services expanded, like our railway services also started, like from Shenzhen, Chengdu, Chongqing, step, uh, step by step, we are getting the services expanded. We are consolidator, not talking about only sea freight consolidated. We are also real waste services consolidated. So this is also something that we see. Besides, uh, in this way, in this uh, pandemic situation, we also have more chances to get more experienced staff into our company. And we even expanded our sales team. We hired uh, around 40 to 60 new sales into our group. So this is what we see, the new chances and something that we could expand from the market. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Daisy. That's, uh, that's uh, very valuable information. Thank you for that. Uh, Sam, um, what about you? What are the positive and negative effects of COVID-19 on your business? Niels, well, for us, like we discussed a little bit earlier before we came online, in Australia, we've been in lockdown. Um, well, all staff have been away from the office since the 23rd of March. So that's pretty much yesterday, eight months. And we're still not back to the office. Uh, in Melbourne, we've been in lockdown, full lockdown for four months. It has been really, really hard here in Australia, even though we're seen as a lucky country, it's been really tough. One thing we've tried to do is um, look back to the recession back in 2009 and see what worked back then and what didn't work and what we should have done and try and look at that as a sort of guideline for what we should try and do. No one could expect this in, in, in our lifetimes. If anyone suggested you know, this coronavirus and what would uh, happen around the world, people will lock you up. So we sat back and said, okay, what worked back then? It really came down to looking at um, areas of our competitors as well as our customers. One thing we noticed back then in 2009 was a lot of our customers were trying to reduce costs in overheads, especially in Australia, wages are quite high. So rather than um, keeping the warehousing open, they would outsource it. So that's one of the factors that we looked at again now, and we got on the front foot. Uh, we're actually quite lucky here with FPS in Australia, where we're not just freight forwarders, we're not just MVOCCs. We actually own our own customs bonded warehouse and we actually own our own trucks. So we're diversified. So we looked at using that to our advantage and focusing on the area that the, our customers or potential customers can look at where they need us in the crisis. And the majority of that would be with the storage, unpacking and distribution. 
that side of the business absolutely went ballistic. Sure, the freight forwarding and MVOCC definitely did drop. Definitely did drop and it still is down. But the warehousing capacity and the transport, that has probably grown about 30%. And in these times, it's actually, you know, unusual. But the, the most critical point that I could say for all of us in our industries is one, the good thing about this coronavirus, if there is anything good about it, um, which probably isn't, but the only positive would be it'll get rid of those cowboys in our industry, in our own countries. That is one good thing. The other thing it makes you look at, things that you never really have looked at and taken for granted. We really need to consider everything these days. Most importantly, like what I started off saying is, diversify your business. Don't just focus on one part of the industry. The more you do, the more success you will have. If one area is down, another area can actually cover for it. And to be honest, that's the most important thing that I learned back in 2009 and why I didn't panic now. And that's the only reason why I think us here in Australia, we're still around and surviving and going strong. Thanks, Sam. Pleasure. Ras, uh, how about for you in uh, Dubai and your business? How has it uh, affected your situation? Hi. Uh, yeah, of course. Uh, are you, you can hear me? Yes, can hear you loud and clear. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So as everyone has a similar problem, you know, we also face the similar, you know, circumstances. You talk about March till now, but uh, luckily we are in a place where, you know, things are under control. You, you know, the government took the precautions, measures, you know. Uh, so we are, uh, we are in a blessed space. Uh, still we run the show. Uh, what we did in, uh, you know, our side, uh, you know, in our company, Reliance, if you talk about, we uh, take this time, you know, like say March till May, we streamline our business, we streamline our operational uh, things, we streamline, you know, our payments and finances so, so that we can, you know, pay to our agents. This is basically, uh, I mean, we pay our agents on time and we make sure that our remittances, payments, you know, everything is streamlined. We got, luckily we got this time, uh, you know, for March till April, we did all this. And thereafter, we look after, you know, uh, the market is getting open. So we are looking for the market trades and all where we can do more. Um, we, we did quite well in these situations and uh, situation like everyone, like as you, everyone is saying, uh, it's tough time, but we also, you know, see uh, where all we can do we, as, a, as a, you know, if you talk about Reliance, we are not only a LCL consolidator, we are also a freight forwarding uh, division also. We have a logistic division also. We change ourselves into pharma also. So we look into all these aspects where all we can, you know, do something better for, for us. And uh, it is plus minus for us, both negative and positive. Yes, of course, there are tough times, uh, you know, we see in Dubai also. And, but positive sides also, like uh, everyone says about the space situation and uh, you talk about the container equipments availability, rates are getting high. But as a LCL consolidator, if the FCL rates are high, then there are more chances of making LCL console boxes. So this is the next positive side also for us. That's right. Thank you. Thank you, Ras. I mean, how about for you in uh, Pakistan? How has the situation affected you positively and, and negatively? Sorry, I mean, if you could please unmute yourself. Yes, thank you. Well, in the, luckily, we are, Pakistan is also one of the countries where the lockdown was quite low in number, like the number of days were quite low. Uh, but in the beginning, it was like, it was chaos. We did not understand, we were not prepared for it. We had no idea how things will react, how customer will react. Container, the import containers were all piling up at the port area. The customer were not ready to accept the problem in the beginning. But slowly and gradually, everybody understood the situation. And like 
the positive point was like because we were able to start new trade lanes because the smaller players were not able to continue in the market on the longer term because they were and we were able to uh, add more new trade lanes at the same time we were able to get our company more digitalized we are more e-commerce now connected to it our customers are accepting uh, the new uh, digitalization and so again like all of like everybody we had the same problems and we we were able to gain the same things understood thank you thank you i mean